growing in that. So I just want to share with you a little bit about our science department for upper schools this year. Um, I will probably throw in some sixth grade um, with that, even though it's lower school, just because I've taught that, and all of our teachers who are teaching sixth grade are also upper levels teachers. And so we really in try to uh, integrate what we want from them in the upper school in the sixth grade, so it's not a huge leap. Okay, you had students who went from sixth grade to Mrs. Miller without that, that integration, they would suffer. Okay, so we really try to, to make sixth grade a little bit higher level. Okay, I'm very excited about our science department. This, we have everybody who's returning this year um, has taught here before. Um, Dr. Flynn is a little different. She, we always, I'll talk about that just a little bit, but everybody has taught here before. So no first year teachers with the science department, which is huge. Um, it's learning curve for them trying to make satellite work and plan things out at a university model level is a huge challenge. So I'm excited about that this year for our science department. Um, so what I want you to do before we start, I'm not going to make you do any math, okay? <laughs> no math. <laughs> but what I want you to do is think about when you were in junior high and high school, your science classes. The teachers, what you thought of them, how they taught, what you remember. So just think for a second about 7th through 12th grade science. Yeah, Jacob's thinking about last year, okay? Think about science, okay? And um, what, what do you remember? Was it a good experience? Was it a football coach who didn't want to be there and you, you really didn't learn anything? What did your experience in that have to do with recalling information later on? Remember the hands on. It was really hands-on. Okay, so because it was hands-on, what does what that make you think about now? Did you like it? Did you not like it? You liked it. It's a smile on her face. She didn't see that, okay? But it was hands-on, and so she liked it. She has a positive influence about that. Somebody else on the other end? Just taking notes from the board. Taking notes from the board, and so the face, yes. So that was like, it wasn't applicable, right? Okay, so this is what, as a science department, we've talked about a lot, um, because how you experience it and what you feel about that makes a difference, not only in whether you go on to sciences, but also, I have found this, in what you tell your children as they're going into their sciences, okay? <laughs> Teaching chemistry is probably the worst, because half the parents go, I just got through it. I didn't learn anything, I got through it, I got to see, I'm done. Okay, that doesn't help me, okay? Um, what I need is for those parents who had the hands on and enjoyed it, um, those are the kind of stories that we want our kids to be able to tell when they get out, okay? Um, I've always been science oriented, but I also had great science teachers from seventh grade on. Mr. Edwards in seventh grade, I remember him, I remember what we did, it was hands on. Um, it was great, and so that has kind of, I don't know if it, it's science was the only thing I was good at, so that kind of helped out too, but um, it really helped mold what I did and what I became. Um, and so that's what we want for your kids too. So as, as a science department, as we were coming up with our profile of graduate, um, that was really kind of what, what our big picture as we were coming up with words, okay? So we want to develop a lifelong appreciation of science and a recognition of God's glory as revealed in the physical world. So we want them to go out of here, whether they go into business or go into international finance or whatever, we still want them to be able to come back to science and what it is and the appreciation for it and to be able to see God in what you're doing. Um, I was in research for a long time and I can tell you that in, um, in that world, God's glory does not come into extreme science. So we want our kids to go into research and we want them to go into all kinds of places where God's glory is not given to science and be able to throw that in, okay? Um, the second is applying knowledge of foundational scientific information. And unfortunately for us to be able to do this, we have to do some of the writing off the board, okay? Um, in order to get to the fun stuff, there has to be some foundational knowledge that we have to put in there. Now, we try to limit that, okay? We are not gonna do months of, or even weeks of just taking notes, okay? Um, that's not our school style. It's definitely not any of our teachers' styles. But, unfortunately, we have to have that knowledge before you send them off with whatever chemicals, otherwise you end up with a huge mess, okay? Um, but this, this is important also. The ability to communicate scientific process and draw conclusions from data. When, even if somebody leaves our classroom and doesn't remember the actual facts, 
the ability to problem solve and think through things, to take this knowledge and apply it to this question and come up with an answer, is a huge part of what we're doing. So if somebody goes away and never takes another science class, that's fine. Um, I just want them to have those problem solving skills, the ability to draw conclusions from data, whether it's in a graph on their SAT or whether it's just in life with this is what I have, this is what I need to accomplish, how do I get there? Science really can do that. Okay? Um, we want them to contribute collaboratively. They will be times to work in groups, um, whether you love it or you hate it. Um, we want you to be good at it. So we're going to work with that. And then inquisitive risk takers. We do not expect all of our students to be A students all the time and automatically know the answer beforehand. Mm -hmm. But what we do expect them to do is contribute and jump in and try whether they know it or not. It's okay to be wrong. That's why not every day is a test. Because we're all about learning and it's about feeling, being willing to raise your hand and try something even if you're not there. And we give room for that. Um, you'll see what the grading styles for everybody. You happen to mess up on two or three assignments, that's okay. We leave room for that kind of growth in our classrooms. Okay? Any questions on profile? All right. Um, instruction models for all of our classrooms. We do lots of demonstrations. Um, some of them will be just because we don't have time for everybody to do it. Some of them will be because it's not safe for everybody to do it. But we'll do lots of demonstrations. Um, we have laboratory experiments that will be done in class or if your student is in an outside of regular Monday, Wednesday, Friday class labs that we'll be doing there. Um, lots of on online simulations. And let me just talk. There's two reasons why we do online simulations. One, um, as you can tell, we don't have a whole lab set up here. Okay, we don't have all the equipment, especially if your student is an AP bio. Uh, we don't necessarily have all the equipment that we would need. So uh, that's one reason to do the online simulation. The other part of that is just time. Um, teaching a university model, we don't have them five days a week where we get to do those kinds of things. And so sometimes we'll do online simulations just so they can get an application of what we're talking about. Because in science, as you guys know, if, if it doesn't relate back to the real world, it doesn't matter. That's true for all of us, whether we're 15 or 35. Um, and so trying to make that application between this is what I, these are the facts, and this is how it applies to real life is important, okay? Um, STEM projects, if you're not familiar with these, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. So it's a way for us to put together what we're learning in science with engineering concepts. And so usually these are projects where it's open-ended. We'll give you a box full of stuff and say, I need you to make um, a water fountain using a balloon in a water bottle. And you have to be able to do this kind of thing. So those are STEM projects. Um, Project-based learning, um, we'll get into a little bit, but all of these will, will then culminate into a fall semester project. Just like last year, if you were here last year, the final exam for the fall semester for all the science classes will be a project. Okay, in the spring, they get a regular written test, but in the fall, um, they will be a project. Okay, just to go through all of our courses and uh, faculty, the science department last year began, we are the only um, uh, department in the school where you get to make a lot of choices as you go along. So once you get past ninth grade biology, um, there are different paths you can take. And so I'm going to walk you through that and just tell you who's currently teaching these classes. Okay, so we start off in sixth grade with life science. This year, Mrs. Wallace will be doing Monday, Wednesday, and Dr. Flynn will do Tuesday, Thursday. And then we move into seventh grade and eighth with Mrs. Miller, earth science and physical science. Um, then biology, ninth grade with Mrs. Wallace. Okay, once they've completed biology with Mrs. Wallace, then they have two options. Okay, they can either go into anatomy and physiology with Mrs. Hay or into chemistry with me. They have these two options. Both of these are college prep courses. So in both of these classes, they're going to be having out-of-class reading assignments that no one will check. So that's where you as a parent, we're going to need you, this, you guys to really help us out. If your student's not doing well, one of the first questions you should ask is, are they doing those reading assignments? Because nobody's going to be checking. Mrs. Hay has quizzes um, that she gives, but, but really this is where that whole college prep concept starts to come back. So are they doing those readings as well as they should be um, on those days? Okay, so after, bio, after ninth grade biology, they get their choice between anatomy, physiology, or chemistry. 
In order to move on to anything higher, they must take chemistry. So if your 10th grader decides they want anatomy and physiology, that's fine. But in 11th grade, they have to take chemistry. They don't get away from me. Okay, they have to take chemistry um, in order to move on. So once you've had chemistry, then you can have a choice between bio 2, AP bio, or physics. So from chemistry, you can go directly into any of these three. However, the physics math requirement is calculus. Okay, so if you're on the regular track, this is not possible your, your junior year. Okay, we do have some students who are advanced in math and that, that can happen, but there is a calculus um, prerequisite here. And I've taught physics here and I will tell you, you have to have it. Okay, don't try to do it without. Okay, so you have your choice between biology 2 and AP biology. This is our first year that we've had those two classes separate. Um, in the past, they've been together and it's, it's worked, but it has not been as efficient as it should be. So this year, those two classes are separate. The um, uh, biology and the lab requirements are different for those two, and I'll get into that. Okay, so these are the science courses that we offer um, and a little bit of how you get through them. Okay, current technologies that most of our teachers are using, everybody's using Enmodo, as they are in probably all your classes. Um, anatomy and physiologists, physiology this year will use Google Classroom. Um, Play Posit is used on and off, 7th, 8th, and 10th. Um, virtual labs, we will use it. Virtual labs, you will see quite a bit for satellite work. Okay, it, it just works out well for them to be able to do that on their own. Um, and then the electronic text. We use ck12.org in two of our science classes, um, chemistry and physics. They do not get a physical textbook. Everything comes off of CK12. And they can download a PDF version of it. There's apps where they can see it, um, but, but there is no physical textbook um, in those two classes. Um, integrated labs are obviously all of our sciences, um, even in chemistry and physics, um, bio 2 and AP bio, we're st we still do some in-class um, labs. But external labs, meaning Tuesdays or Thursdays, okay, so if your child is in a, it's chemistry, physics, biology, biology 2, or AP bio, they will have to be here a certain number of Tuesday or Thursdays during, this, during both semesters. Okay, so if you have not, you have somebody in those classes and you haven't worked that into your schedule yet, um, we can talk. You'll get those dates on Friday. It's tomorrow, right? Yeah, we'll get those dates tomorrow um, as they're already lined up, the times and everything. All those schedules are already put together um, if you need that. Um, chemistry meets four times a semester, so eight times a year. Physics is three times a semester. Biology two is four, and AP Bio is seven. Um, so if you're in AP Bio, you're up here quite a bit. All right. <clears throat> um, these are our short-term goals. Um, later on, we can go into to our bigger goals if you guys are interested. But really, what we want to do is partner with you guys. Um, Dr. Tarpley mentioned it several times, but really, they're at home with you more than they're with, with us. I have, if you're in their chemistry, you're having three hours a week. Okay, and I don't have them a whole lot. So really, we, they need to know that you are on board and have willing to help them with anything, which might just mean you tell them to email me, okay? Really, parents, somebody had said it earlier, as teachers, we really do want to hear from them. I would much rather get six emails from them or Edmodo messages or whatever rather than have them walk into class and say, I didn't know what to do. That's, that's not what it's about. Um, we really are there on Tuesday, Thursdays to answer questions, to make sure that everybody is up to speed. Because like I said, only an hour a day, we got to just keep rolling, okay? So please encourage them to write us and let us know what's going on, okay? So family integration. Find out what they're, what they're talking about. Um, if you see an article in the, in the paper about it, if you see something on USA Today about what we're talking about, send that to them. Encourage them to put that on their Enmodo page. Make what we're studying in class be real at home. Okay. Um, teacher parent support. I want to work with you guys as parents to support your students as much as possible. If they're struggling, let us know. If it's just not meshing, let us know. If there's a problem in class with somebody else, um, you know, we, 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 our classes are small enough that we try to be aware of everything, but sometimes things are happening and, and we don't know. Talk to us, okay? We're not ignoring the situation. 
Uh, we just haven't become aware of it. So please keep communication up with us and active communication on our part. If your student's not doing very well and we have not heard from you, we will write you and say, hey, you know, they're like at a 72 and things aren't looking up. Um, we're going to communicate with you guys and hopefully you'll communicate back. Now, if you are in ninth through 12th grade, we're going to hope that your student is communicating with us as opposed to you. If you have a 10th or 11th grade student, I really would like to hear from them about, about their issues. If they're not going to communicate, then yeah, let me know. But we really want to empower them in what they're doing. And again, it's all about college prep. And hopefully you won't be writing your student's college professor when they're a freshman in college, right? So we want to start, I had a friend in grad school whose mother still wrote the dean of our grad school. Um, and it killed him, yeah. Um, so start training them now to talk to us, okay? Um, so that's all I have in hopes of getting guys out early. Any questions about our science program? About what class your students in? Okay, well thank you very much and um, take a few minutes and we'll switch out for our